this portal, but I figured out that there really is no point of no return unless it's the final boss, so we're, we're good to go. We still have, like, at least, like, two hours until the final boss. So we have to be ready to face anything. Only way is forward. I'm determined to save Shion and Dana. Nothing I learned can change that. But I am going to be walked out of fast traveling for a bit, it appears. Also, why even have him talk and say the only way is forward if... I mean, do they now just walk me? What was the point of that dialogue option if I can still go back? Hold up, you guys. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. Well, my only plan is to get to the final boss, then wrap up everything I gotta do. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. Yeah, the Forbidden Zone. For the people of Lenigus, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off-limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. Grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, what we were made to believe it was. But now... It is finally time to discover this area's true purpose, and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Dan and Astral energy so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. The creation of a governing central figure taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. 
The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I found one that was successful. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alphen. <sighs> oh boy. They re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alphen. Fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Volron. Volron? But that means... She's only sovereign because someone made him that way too. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. <laughs> but what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Probably because they died. Upon victory, the Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The Crown Contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown Contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a Sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, Someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way, it's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. Oh boy. Lots of reading for me, hmm? I'll do that. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign. And Volron as well. Ah, shit. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey! It looks like the terminals in here turned on too! We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Only two sovereigns, 
in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> uh, forgive me. Alfin. I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already. So it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it. Just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it. Before you ever got that far. <sighs> wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now. I was expecting Law to say he'll give a good punch in the face for Alfin to calm him down. Alright, let's see. There's a lot to read. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Sedative mask. A device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts their mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medicinal applications are also recognized, particularly as a means for preventing patients from sustaining mental trauma. However, doing so is not recommended, as prolonged use of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. Due to the loss of production facilities, incurred from the partial destruction of Wenigus, additional devices will no longer be manu manufactured. Brainwashing. After receiving reports of a robust reform of the rule emerging in Dana's water realm, a study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. This system is unique in that it evaluates only the ward as the supreme authority while regulating both Ren's and Dana's alike to enslavement. Test subject 10105 serves as the realm's current ward and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rather, it has done so by sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness at population control, monitoring of the situation will continue. Collapse of the cognitive facilities via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear has proven to be the key of this style of rule. Once a subject loses uh, anatomy, they become desensitized to fear and subsequently cease the, to prioritize even their own personal safety. Though such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers, it remains an effective way to c cultivate dis disposable infantry and slaves from manual labor. Soldiers in Lenigas who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure classified sectors as a trial. The results will be monitored. Okay, that's really fun. A large-scale astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental composition of Dana's astral energy and transmits it to Rena. Activation control of astral energy conversion is achieved by placing the Sovereign, Maiden, and Rena's Alma within the central core of Lenigus. It, it is comprised of classified and essential personnel uh, residence zones around a large conduit along with a dis defensive layer surrounding them. This outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central conduit, while simultaneously functioning as the stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deploying the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, because, of the only, because this only takes place during the final stage of the spirit channeling ceremony, no contingency plan to address and said damage is needed. Until that phase, Lenigus serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the Crown Contest on Dana. Warning, any personnel of level 3 authority or lower is strictly forbidden from the classified zone. Any violators will be immediately executed. A massive spirit vessel will be placed on Dana for the spirit channeling ceremony. It serves as the tip of Lenigus' conduit from which it separates upon landing in Dana waters. It extends two sets of con conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface of Dana. 
Once activated, it links to the biological spirit vessels placed in each realm, efficiently harvesting the plant's astral energy and masses. The accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via, via Lenegas. Because construction and adjustment take place in the Forbidden Zone's reg regulator area, Lenegas' outer layer must be deployed prior to launch, intended to function s simul auto autonomously. Only maintenance per personnel are expected to manually interfere or expected to manually interface with it when necessary. No other personnel is required to its function. Huh. Detachable Harvester 1 was lost on Dana after exploding to the to the rampage to the rampage exhibited by the Sovereign. Detachable Harvester 2 landing point will remain the same as the, that of the previous model. This is due to the explosion of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling easier connection to the center of Dan. Okay. Master cores. Master cores are an instrument of power connecting, containing astral energy that belongs to one of the six elements. Five of those master cores, those with earth, water, fire, wind, and light, are loaned to Renan Wards at the time of the Crown Contest. Only the Dark Matter Master Core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renis Armor is ready to be reformed. Its, its existence is to be kept top secret. Underneath the Master Core's spherical outer layer is a force field crystal used for the purpose of the astral energy contained in stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state for a duration of their turn here. I don't know. Each ward competes in the crown contest to amass their allotted type of astral energy. It's the event of emergency. Each ward may be allowed to withdraw from the respective stock of astral energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. Design flaws have been discovered in how the Renes Alma materializes. Be advised that active master cores may resonate with, e with other master cores located in, pro in close proximity and become unstable. Due to successful regeneration of the Renis Alma, Master Cores will cease to be deployed and the Crown Contents will be permanently halted. Spirit Cores are internal to used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in a biological sub subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass astral energy generated from physical activity, which is then emitted from the host body itself. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, the host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that the Danans must be employed to harvest the astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in pro producing them, it is advised that spirit cores be retrieved from the host's bodies and reused upon their death. Spirit cores can also be embedded in Zoogles to control them via astral arts. Increased physical load on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final con confirmation of the ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death for maximum astral energy yields is still pending. That is pretty fucked up. Wards. Each crown contest, five of the best qualified members of the random populace are chosen to act as wards, vying to serve as the next sovereign. During their tenure, they are granted level 3 authority as well as one of the five elemental realms to administrate and its corresponding master core. They are also assigned an ID crest indicating the designated element. The, select, the selection process is based only on astral art, artistry, you know, just astral arts, and physical and mental aptitude. Other variables such as age have no bearing whatsoever, because only the strongest go to, the, go to become the wars. The business itself does not inherently make an individual any stronger. It should be noted, however, the wards are not the only individuals capable of drawing out Master Corps' powers. All Renans must take part in the selection process and acceptance in the position is mandatory. It is not allowed for those deemed suitable to the client. So, what, a, f a damn baby could be doing this? Furthermore, in the event that an acting ward is incapacitated and can no longer serve in their position, a replacement must be quickly prepared. Which hasn't been done at all this time. The following is a resort on their second successful case of Sovereign Test Subject Experimentation. Test Subject 10105, given name Volron, Generation NA, Unique Adjustment Index, uh, you know, NA. Although Subject possesses high weight and potential, it exhibits significant mental instability, along with a strong distaste for following orders. 
As such, the risk it poses surpass even those of the last su successful subject, itself a failure and is therefore under condition for disposal. This is the first successful case in 300 years. Previously mentioned risk factors are now uh, mitigate, mitigated due to established control product protocols, subject to be evaluated under the assumption that Plan 2 will be processed and will be dispatched to Dana under the, the guise of serving as a ward. The Sovereign acts as one against the central control device of the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and ID crest. A Dan subject serves as the base of the creation in theory. Ideal candidates possess equal affinity for every astral element. However, such aptitude is strictly this is statistically rare to uncover within real world conditions. As a result, most subjects die during the adjustment period and stability is still not guaranteed for those who survive it. This instability coupled with the Sovereign's powers of astral manipulation pose a high risk of the security of Lenigus if left unchecked. As such, stabilization measures must be put in place via the support mechanism when utilizing the Sovereign and the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. No effect alter alternate methods to perform this ceremony have been found. Trials on Dana subjects are authorized to continue. Unit 2 adjustments are a success, subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extent observation takes place. The Maiden acts as a sovereign support mechanism for the spirit channeling ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Renan subject serves its functions, providing the sovereign with a supplemental dark astral it wax in tandem with the Renan's Alma. During the ceremony, it is partially responsible for the actual energy conversion, as well as maintaining stability over the Sovereign's own powers. Additionally, the degree of intimacy between it and the Sovereign has been observed to positively impact the level of stability in both subjects. So, basically, this is like, if these two are deeply in love, there is a higher chance of success. That's, that's how I viewed it anyway. Because of this, trials and activations of the Sovereign without the Maiden present are expressly forbidden. Furthermore, neither the Sovereign nor the Maiden are to be informed about the details of the Spirit Channeling plan. I can see this being like, if it's a big success, you know, you could have a Dan and, and Renan get married, the Maiden and Sovereign get married, and then you could have peace between them both, hopefully, but I don't think that's what Renan wants. Mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed to cause the past cause of the past Sovereign's rampancy. Countermeasures must be considered. Ah. In line with plan adjustments, the current subject will have its maiden registration revoked and be returned to the original household. Ah, uh, so that's what happened to Naori. So Naori had some mental issues, and that was partially the problem for what happened to Alfin. And so she just got returned back to where she came from. Looks pretty similar to the room that Alvin was in. I'm gonna need those white bottles. Man, when I fight the final boss on Unknown, I'm just gonna be fucking item spamming. Another memory. <sighs> right after your little rampage. Naori, I... I... Don't talk. I have to do this. I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. 
the chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%. Oh man, he would have died. Long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But uh, If I don't head back, Lenigus will be nothing but ashes and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Alfin. Vision. It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenigus. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenigus crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me. And made me Iron Mask. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. Uh. Okay. But where does this take us? Straight to hell, I presume. Oh yeah, I can see the mouth of it right now. walk into a dangerous area where I can't, um, I mean, have I walked anywhere that I could teleport to? No. I had to run all the way back here. This ah. place, we've seen this in one of Naori's memories. Of course. Couldn't you have a nice, pure-looking channeling ceremony area, and not this weird, intestine-like kind After of place? After 300 years, this is where it was held. The spirit channeling ceremony. This hey, don't touch is where it. the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin, but there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, 
My visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No, it's different this time.